is good to be in Christ. Asante sana skofu, asante ni wachungaji, watumishu mungu, waimbaji, kila mmoja mbaya ako maale hapa. Nasema karibuni katika, we call it, on the, on the poster I saw, it's called worship experience. Hallelujah. But after this message, you will never call it a worship experience. When it was present, it will become worship revelation. Are we together, somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, Wembaji, I want to give you this prayer. The rest of my years have been a singer. In my Coco Bands, worship team, like Muka, there is a time in the Coco Band, Moja. So, if you want to worship team, there are more. I to be able to check what Coco Band, I'm a Coco worship team. Because I want to go to my hands up. But I'm going to go back to State House. Or Kibaki, when I go to the during that time, I'm going to Kibaki. Nikuwa kwa bani na hawa kina Willis Raburu. Nisita zili mewaribu tu. Wadaza sifesa. And we used to, today, kuna watu wana cheza vyongo. Na kuna wengine wana piga vyongo. In this learning, we are going to learn. Tell somebody be ready to learn. I'm having a problem today because I don't know how I'm going to use that 40 minutes. Because I believe my introduction can take an hour. Because I'm not dealing with experience. I'm dealing with revelation here. Praise to Jesus. I'm dealing with revelation here. Because worship is not experience. The reason why we have so many mistakes in the body of Christ is because we want to experience worship. And we have made worship experience. But today let us come to a dimension where worship becomes revelation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, when you take your Bible from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22, the last verse, that is verse 21, you will not find anywhere a word worship experience. Hallelujah. Kama umefanyi, umesome kazi fulani na unaplai, that company will want to see your experience, your prowess, your expertise in that area and in that field of your training. But when it comes to worship, hallelujah, yeah. it's not about experience, it is revelation. And uh, after this teaching, there are songs you have sung here, you will never sing them again. You are seeing them out of experience. Now you will sing by revelation. Yeah. Praise to Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Yeah. The only person who is going to wait and hear this is a man or a woman or a son or a daughter or a brother or a sister who is ready. To learn. What is your spirit, son? I want us to. While the young boys was in the teams, come away with young boys in Simama. For every team I'm about to meet a job, pale. If you are a leader, you take up Simama. In those teams. Hallelujah. Quickly, because I want to compress time. I will preserve, ma'am. I want somebody from River of Life to stand on her behalf. Please. Hallelujah. Somebody else. Asmame, kwa niya bayaki? Asmame, hallelujah. One brother, we are members of the Unduga member on behalf of River of Life. Please, asmame, too. Sikiwa kwa api. Yeah, good, good. Now, I want you to come from where you are. Mukaya karibu hapa. And then have your Bibles. Are we together? And then you will be given microphones so that you will help me to read. Because that time, ningumu, but I want to read with as many as of you. Are we together? Do it as fast as possible. I want us to talk about understanding worship. Very fast, technicians do very fast because worship when come on a jeshi. Mitz wabe melezi yapa. Fanyeni alaka. Sawa, sawa. Worship niya watu machua. Number one. Hallelujah. I want us to talk about understanding worship. Understanding worship. The word worship as it is by itself. You should be writing. Give me your, 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 your heart, your ears, your just everything to understand this. The word worship, we are going to define what the word worship is. Hallelujah. Are we together? But now look here. When you want to understand the Bible, 
and you want to understand the scriptural context, there is what we call, there are three laws that will make you or will help you to understand or to exegete the Bible very well. The first law is called the law of first mention. Are we together? The law of first mention. Somebody say the law of first mention. The law of first mention. Number two, the second law is called the law of double mention. Can we say that? You know, I'm telling you to repeat so that you can, it can be sought, it can sink, and you can have it, you can embrace it. And then the third one is called the law of the, the emphatic law. Hallelujah. Emphatic law that emphasizes. Are we together? That emphasizes. For example, today, there are churches, there are pastors who read Deuteronomy. Chapter 22, verse 5. Somebody read for me. Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. I'm laying a foundation here. Hallelujah. And when we go back to our churches, we are going to worship. Because we rarely worship. But now we are going to do what? To worship. I'm one, I'm just choosing, I'm just choosing a, 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 a Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5, to be an example to explain what I want to bring forth into our understanding. And then another person from the people I chose open for me Romans chapter 1. I just want to bring something here so that you can understand the law of first mention, double mention, and then emphatic law of mention. I'm a, yeah, exactly. Hallelujah. So let us read Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5, if you are there, somebody. Let me read because I see a big man. K as if I am a fasi yamsavio manaume. Wanda manaume as if I am a fasi yamanamke. Kwamahana and Akila Afanya Mambo Hayo ni machukizo kwa wana munguako. Somebody who does not want to learn and a shanga yima vasi na worships na kuja wabi. What that one is a far pole pole. Hallelujah. Are we are we ready to learn? Yes. Good. Hallelujah. A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. So the, um, I want to show you an example of the first law. I will not explain about the two, but just I, I will not explain about the third. I will explain the first and the second, and then I will show you what is worship. And then from what is worship, she will understand what you have been doing that you should not do. And by the grace, if there will be more time, I will show you some of the things you have done here that you shouldn't have done. Because what we are used to, when we hear worship experience, we do a lot of practice. Watch a little and watch two and I because it's an experience. Hallelujah. Remember, remember, Pastor Dixon, remember now, that's a, I see a pastor that's mama, mama, we, we have some. Hallelujah, I'm beginning my coffee. To member, hallelujah. And actually, my growth even in the world has been because of worship. Hallelujah. And so I want us to grow together on the same. And by the end of this learning, next time when we organize another event like this one, we shall start learning at 1 p.m. Believe me. Hallelujah. Are we together? Amen. Good. Let's go. I just want to prove to you it's not experience, it's revelation. And when the revelation begins to communicate with you, now you'll understand indeed it is revelation. So that is the law of first mention. Let us read Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Did I say 2? 27. Eh? Romans chapter 1, verse 21 to 27. Very fast. And I, I, I would like to read in English. Uh -huh. uh, the Bible says Romans chapter 1, verse 21. To 27. Eh? Yes. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, yes. nor were thankful, but became fertile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. 22 says, professing to be wise, they became fools. 23 says, and judged the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like 
corruptible man. Goja kidogo. Let me read because you are not reading like a worshiper. <laughs> Even the way you read the Bible makes sense. You are not reading like a worshiper. Hallelujah. Let us read. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory in the, in the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals in creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passion for even the women exchanged are we together even the, the women exchanged natural shoes for what is against nature likewise also the men leaving the natural shoes of the woman burned into their lust for one another men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due that is how we read the bible my, my friend Hallelujah. Praise King Jesus. So as we teach about worship, we teach you how to read, we teach you how to understand. Are we together? Yes. So the law of first mention in Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5 Hakuna law ni hapo, ukienda kuuliza Musa, hii law ni mbono nisema watu wazifai na kwambia mbisi chuki tunetuwa lumi. Because hata ya mwanya kiongea, he was wearing his skirt. Hallelujah. Amen. When you read from Psalms 133, he was wearing his skirt. Hallelujah. They were wearing skirts. So it was not even a men were wearing skirts. He was mama nindo matunyanganya ngoze. Hallelujah. I have begun a conversation. This for another day. If you want me to prove on this, let it be a conversation for another. Yes. I just want to use the law of first mention. Hallelujah. So now the law of second mention appears in Romans chapter 1. And then we realize Moses was talking about homosexuality. He's telling them when you go to that land that you are going to possess, there are Canaanites, there are Hittites. What is Canaanites? The spirit of prostitution. The land you are going to possess, there is homosexuality. So when you go there, don't do what they do. Don't, don't a man come, come here. Let me use you because you are my son. Hallelujah. When Mukifika Uko, Hallelujah. I am a man is a man. When I marry him, it means he has taken a position. Go on Fubazi la Manamuke. He has become a woman. So when he says Manamuke, as if I was in Pazaro, Manamuke, and Manisha, where Manamuke, where Mama Dada Liapa, who is a lesbian, who is a lesbian, who is a lesbian, I have a girlfriend. Where is the man who is a girlfriend? Hallelujah. You have taken up the roles of a man. Hallelujah. Now, when I also, when I'm married by another man, I have taken a role. Because I have a woman to Victor. You can sit down. Are you getting it? So, for us to understand worship, in Romans it says, they exchange even the worship. And that's why they began to do these things. And even today, we are seeing them today in churches. We are seeing what they are calling LGBTQ. Hallelujah. A man is a, marry, a man marrying another man. So the one who is married, that's what Moses was talking about. Are we together? So when you are a preacher of the world and you don't have the three laws, the law of first mention, second mention, hallelujah, which is double mention and emphatic mention, you miss the point and then you interpret your own things. Are we together, somebody? Hallelujah. He was not talking about that. So you are as good as you are women when you are in your trousers. No problem. That is the truth. Are we together? It can only come when we do exegesis in the scriptural context. I'm taking you somewhere. Are we together? So I have said that the word worship has been mentioned how many times in the Bible? 332 times 
directly without mentioning how many times indirectly. There is a pro there is a reason here. Are we together? Now, the Bible was written in two main languages. Hebrews and Greek. Are we together? Hebrews and Greek. Then through what is called Anglo-Saxon, it was interpreted into Latin. Because Latin is closely related with English, but English was too young. Are we together, somebody? Yes. English was too young. English has been growing in the Tuxwell in Akua. So because it was too young, hallelujah, so when, by the time it is arrived, so from Latin, then it was translated or interpreted into English. King James Fashion, about 500 plus years ago. Yeah. Praise King Jesus. So there are a lot of things we miss when we hear the word worship because we understand the way we read our English Bibles. But when we go back to the root of the word, and then come exactly with the word as I want to take you through that journey. You will stop experiencing worship and you will begin to enjoy the revelations Amen. of worship. Hallelujah. Paul says in the book of Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, when it pleased God to reveal, because it's a revelation, to reveal his son in me, I did not confer with flesh and blood. It is revelation. Jesus is asking them, who do people say the Son of Man is? When Peter answers, he says, this is revelation. It has not been answered by flesh and blood. Hallelujah. It is a revelation. Praise King Jesus. So it's a revelation. So I want to take you to worship revelation. And then when we are through with worship experience. We have begun worship revelation. Hallelujah. We have begun worship Revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. So, when the word has been translated from Hebrew, Greek, then through what we call the Anglo Saxon or, Val or Vulgate, now we come to English, from Latin to English. That's why, even when you hear the word rapture, and then you just conclude. Ama, for example, when you, when you read John 14, and then the rooms, and then you think that those rooms are in heaven, then you need revelation. Amen. You need revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. When Jesus is saying, I'm going to prepare rooms, and then if it were not so, I would have told you, because in my, father, in my father's house are many rooms. That house was you. He was going to prepare you on the cross. Hallelujah. He was talking about going to the cross to prepare the house. And that's why you are the house of God. So you are the temple. He lives in you. Amen. Are we together? Amen. So when we go with these three laws, we are going to understand the Bible. And we are going to understand what is worship. So, in the Anglo-Saxon, the word worship means honor. That refers to honoring someone or something. Whose quality I've begun teaching now. Whose quality supersedes yours? Are we together? To honor somebody or something whose quality supersedes yours. In other words, it's the word reverence. In that definition, have you seen a song somewhere? That's why it is revelation here today. Hallelujah. Let me repeat for those who are writing. Because in learning you need to write. Praise King Jesus. Amen. Let me read. Because I've written some of the points here. It means. Honoring something or someone. Whose quality. Supersedes yours. So by the time we arrive in English. We have already converted the word worship into singing. Singing is not worship. Tell somebody, singing is not worship. Singing is not worship. Singing is not worship. You can come here, you sang nonsense, and you brought your feelings, and you carried your guitar. When we finished singing, you carried your guitar and went back. <laughs> the same, same way you came, you went back, and yet you never worshiped. Are we together, somebody? Are we together? Amen. I'm going to show you from the law of first mention as we continue. So in the law of first 
mention, it means, in the law of first mention, it means, in, in Hebrew is the word shaka, not shaka hola, please. <laughs> but uh, it, it could be connected with shaka hola because, kuna kitu kwa labda wanabutu, kwa kisiri na atujui. Because in Hebrew is the word shaka. S-H-F for those who are writing, unajua ni vizuri kuandika hii vitu. Hallelujah. Ni vizuri kuandika hii vitu. And in case I don't finish this teaching, you, I'm giving you permission to follow me on YouTube. Maybe I can finish it elsewhere. And then it will be okay. Hallelujah. S-H-A-C-H-A-H. S-H-A-C-H-A-H. Shaka. For Shaka Hola, maybe. So Shaka Hola, those people could be worshiping somebody. Kuna kitu beyond Mackenzie that we don't know. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Kuna kitu beyond Mackenzie. Mumesikia ta loya wamesema na mnagani. Loya wamewuliza, nyinyi muna munasema ta watu wa wakwena. Nyinyi mmenda mikuni mepata kwenye wanifunga kukufa wajafika. Mumenda. Nyinyi mumenda mikuni mbawakosa huko. Hallelujah. So it means shaka which refers to bowing down. It means to bow down or to prostrate or to lay down. That is the second definition I'm giving you about the word worship. Again, have you seen the word singing in that one? No. Then it means it has to be worship revelation here today. <laughs> Hallelujah. It has to be worship revelation here today. And in this, if I can have time, now I will show you, because singing is not worship, but I can show you now where worship comes in. Sorry, where, where singing comes in, so that we can arrive there. So, Mungu is idea, time, time. So let us use the law of first mention. Let us read Genesis chapter 22, verse 5, where it is first mentioned. Wale niliambia mkuu hapa na mimi fungueni Biblia zenu. Kama nitajisomea. Kwa sababu na sasa Genesis na mtu wa Revelation. Hallelujah. Let us read Genesis chapter 22 from verse 5. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey, the land, the land, and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. This is the time when God has told Abraham, sacrifice your son. Hallelujah. He's trusting him. Go, let, let me begin from verse 1. Hallelujah. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering and one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with a donkey. The Lord and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. What has he told them? Stay here. You will not go with me beyond this place. But I and my son, we shall go further so that we can do what? We can worship. When he's telling the servants we are going to worship God, there is no guitar. There is no drum set. There is no keyboard. There is no microphone. Are we, are we traveling well? Or am I too fast? If, if I fail to finish, blame yourselves. Because that is the problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we see guitar? Do we see? I, I play all these instruments here. All of them I play by the grace of God. There are some of my sons and daughters here. I've played for them even in studio. 
music is our and I have recorded. So, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an expert in these things. Hallelujah. But that expertise cannot make me a worshiper. Are we together? Because worship is not keyboard. Worship is not guitar. Worship is not a mic. Go, that is not worship. I've told you what worship is, and I st I'm still building the case so that we can understand much deeper what worship is. Are we together? Yes. Hallelujah. Let us read Exodus chapter 4, verse 31. As we continue exegetically to understand the word worship, because we are on the law of first mention and even double mention. Exodus chapter 4, verse 31. So the people believed, and when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he had looked on their, on their afflictions, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. They bowed their heads and worshipped. Does the Bible say, then they bowed their heads and sang? No. They bowed their heads and sang? Oh, no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They bowed their heads and sang. No. They bowed their head and danced while they, they are bowed down. No. Hallelujah. They bowed their heads and worshipped. Was there a guitar? No. Was there a tambourine? No. Saxophone? No. Flute? No. Then something is wrong. Then the church has to come back to revelation knowledge. So that in that journey, we can come. We can come to understand what God is speaking to us here. So we see the books we have read so far mentioning the word worship, bowing down, as I say, without hallelujah, with, without uh, without a guitar or a musical instruments. Praise King Jesus. When you go back to Genesis chapter twenty-two. What we are seeing there, we are seeing a knife, Abraham with a knife, we are